It's Wednesday the 30th of September, it's Channel 4, the time is exactly 10.55 and this is the 11 o'clock show. So there you go, on the air, 10 seconds and already we've screwed up. I'm Fred McCauley. I'm Brennan Burns and loading on the sofa is the 11 o'clock show's roaming reporter, Ian Lee. Hello, I'm Ian Lee and I believe in magic. <laughs> Thanks Ian. This is the day when it was discovered that 5 million gallons of raw sewage flowed into the River Cray in Kent. Five million gallons? That's shitloads! Yes, it is, Brendan. And it's also the day that gibbering Scottish railman Jimmy Knapp made a keynote address to the Labour Party conference and said, <laughs> Sorry, Jimmy, I don't know what key that was or what note. <laughs> Over on the other side right now, it's Newsnight. 45 minutes of serious news, insight and analysis. Well, we can do all that. And what's more, we can do it in 60 seconds. Mm -hmm. As curfews for children come into force, police expect kids to be inside by nine. But with good behaviour, they should get parole by 13. <laughs> Bosses fear consequences of new 48-hour working week. A CBI spokesman asked, does this mean we have to come in before lunch? <laughs> John Prescott slates privatised rail company's performance. Jimmy Knapp so confident that we renationalised, he's run up his own Jim will fix it badges. <laughs> the BME admits that doctors have been covering up the truth about ME for years. Like BSE and CJD, they simply can't remember what the initials stand for. <laughs> Six tons of cheese stolen from the British Cheese Championship. Police are looking for the two Ronnies to help write the punchline. Coming up in the show, News Gold. Hi, my name is Tommy Vance, and let me take you on a rock and roller coaster trip through time to the stories that we used to thrill to. Lots and Jim Fosley meets the Channel 4 voice of youth. Later, that you one. were with her in the government? Yes, for a time, until she threw me out. And what was she like? Was she a bitch? <laughs> uh, with the launch of the 11 o'clock show, ITV already seemed to be running scared. In an obvious panic measure, as you can see from today's Telegraph, they've spent £1 million on a revamped new look. Unveiled yesterday, ITV now calls itself the People's Channel and has a heart symbol and a logo in. And I quote, caring lowercase initials. <laughs> So the key words are people's heart and caring. That reminds me of someone. <laughs> <laughs> and how can a logo be caring? What will it do? Make me feel warm inside? Well, it's actually very cleverly done. You can take any word, remove the capital letters, and it suddenly becomes strangely alluring. <laughs> See? The frightening power of persuasion. According to the article, ITV have incorporated the heart into several spinning motifs to be shown before programmes. Although they're being kept under wraps until the official launch, Brendan has kindly agreed to recreate them for us live in the studio. See if you can spot the link between them. The first one is a Union Jack with the heart in the middle of it. The second one is uh, sparkles in the shape of a heart. And the third one is a cake with, yes, the heart. Oh. <laughs> So the key words are Union Jack, sparklers, and a great big cake all to yourself. That reminds me of someone. <laughs> As part of the revamp, they've also planned changes in the schedule. Details haven't been officially released, but according to this leaked document, the new schedule will include a nightly show with Will Carling that'll only run for three weeks, and a new series called Can Cook But Will Vomit. <laughs> Yesterday, in Tony Blair's big speech to the party conference, he outlined his vision of a new Britain based on the idea of community spirit. But just how strong is community spirit in Britain? Well, earlier today, I sent out myself out to find out, and here I am now on film. <laughs> so, community spirit. Would people help others in need, or couldn't they give a monkey's toss? But, excuse me, sorry, you, you couldn't do me a favour. Would you be able to tie my shoelace up, please? I don't, I don't know how to do it. It's come undone. That'd be great. I've got... <laughs> It's quite an important job in these days, a spy for the government, and I just need to look... That's fantastic, thank you very much. Just, I've got a very important date with, um... Well, it's all very hush-hush, with George Michael today, and I want to... 
get the smartest I can. I just went to the dentist and had some fillings done, very painful, but I really fancy some chewing gum, but I can't break it down. Do you think you could chew it for me, just to make it a bit softer and then... I'm, it's just, I'm trying to give up smoking as well. If you roll, roll it up in your hands, that'll soften it. Oh, that'd be great, just break it down a bit. <laughs> How's that? Is that? That's great. That's much better. Thanks a lot, Julie. So there is some community spirit left in Tony Blair's New Britain. But his other main theme was the zero tolerance towards crime policy. But which is stronger? People's desire to stop crime or their willingness to help others? And what if that person who needed help was in fact a criminal? With the aid of this crappy disguise, I intend to find out. <laughs> Do you know, have you got a light at all? Yeah. Cheers, thanks very much. <laughs> Good work, <laughs> Cheers. Excuse me, mate, you couldn't do me a favour. You couldn't post these photos to me because I'm, I'm under surveillance. I'm not supposed to put this sort of stuff through the post. It's a bit, a bit explicit, you know what I mean? It's lady, ladies and animals, really. You can, they're watching me. So they, won't, they won't notice you. They won't notice you at all. Just whack it in there. Well, look, who's going to know? That'd be great if you do me a favour. Save me going down for 20 years. Cheers. <laughs> this is great. Christy, cheers. Excuse me, pal. I've just got a load of cheese in. Do you have fancy me? 30 grand worth of it. Nice cheap cheese. How much? Could, I've got about 30 grand worth. I mean, you could have this. You could have this for a quid. And I can t if you want, I can go and get you. I've got a lot more. Excuse me. You couldn't get me out and just getting these in the back of that jag, could you? <laughs> yeah, that's bloody heavy. So if you see any. Um, Police around, just give us a shout, you know what I mean? It's a bit, <laughs> a bit hot in the city. You back in the lorry? Uh, well, out of someone's flat, you know what I mean? Excuse me, pal, sorry, I, I couldn't ask you a favour, could I? I've got this, um, this little problem here I need to get rid of. I've got this shooter, you couldn't bury it in your back garden for me, just get rid of it, please. Just, just put it in your back garden, no one's gonna know. I mean, you, are you sure? You're doing me a great favour. Just got this gun, you couldn't bury it in your back garden for me, could you? You're doing me a great favour. Super, thank you very much. This is Ian Lee, 11 o'clock show, Archway. <laughs> was that a real shooter, Ian? Yes, it was, and I used it on the way. <laughs> <laughs> American News Now. Tomorrow, the transcripts of the infamous tape conversations between Monica Lewinsky and Linda Tripp are to be released. Meanwhile, a Senate committee is still trying to nail down a precise definition of impeachable offences. We go over now to our American correspondent, Rich Hall, who's standing in front of the White House, as if simply being there somehow makes him know what he's talking about. Hello, Rich. Hi, everybody. I'm standing here in front of the White House. That's it. Uh, look at that uh, faintly suggestive spurting white fountain out front. They should shut that thing down. It's disgusting. Anyway, this week things are fairly back to normal here as far as Clinton's concerned. He's, uh, he's got uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and Yasser Arafat in there. He's trying to work out some kind of uh, land accord. And there's a photo in the Washington Times today of the three men. You'll notice they're standing. They're standing. Apparently nobody wants to sit in the White House anymore. It's kind of like visiting a porno theater, you know what I mean? But this is one thing that Clinton is great at. He's great at sticking his head into peace talks and trying to get credit for him. It's kind of like when you go on holiday and you get your photos back and there's always that weird guy in the photos. That's what Clinton is like during peace talks. There goes the Secret Service. They're all over the place. And here's my question. We're at a point in history where some semen on a dress is going to bring down a president. How stupid and pathetic is that? And also, where are all these Secret Service people when you needed them? You know what I mean? They throw themselves in front of a bullet. Come on. Anyway, <laughs> I'm Rich Hall here in Washington, D.C. See you later. Now, obviously, there's been a bit of criticism in the press that the Labour conference is all stage managed, that Labour's image is being manufactured for public consumption. Well, last night, I obtained an exclusive interview with Northern Ireland Secretary Mo Molam to discuss the matter. All right. Ian Lee, on the line from London. Ian, you're <laughs> lying from the Secretary of State. Hello, Mo. It's Ian Lee here. How are you? OK? Very well, Ian. And you? I'm fine, thanks. Yeah, um, I've got a question about Labour's image. Now, you're a serious politician, and you've done some fantastic work in Northern Ireland, which I'm sure no one would disagree with. So why, why do you trivialise it by being photographed with that ginger guy that everyone hates? <laughs> um, well, actually, what I was doing, Ian, was that we have a youth event at party conference every Sunday before it starts. Yep. And I go because it's usually good fun and I enjoy a dance. Yep. 
And Chris Evans, very kindly, ginger guy Sorry, you I, might I, call I him. I talking about um, Robin Cook, actually. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I know it's not big and it's not clever, but just for one moment there, I felt close to the heart of power. <laughs> Last night, the West End saw the premier of Steve Coogan's run uh, in London. Uh, there he is, uh, with his hand on Caroline Hearn's left breast, practising for when he gets a Golden Globe award. <laughs> but you couldn't have gone because you wouldn't have been able to get a ticket, because it was only it girls and boys that were allowed in. Luckily, we've got our very own it girl. She's called Pandora Box Granger, and here's her report. But we should warn viewers that they may find some of the following scenes distressing. She really is terrible. <laughs> Well, here I am in the middle of the middle of London, and you'll never guess how I got here. Um, my nasty car never turned up, so I had to go on one of those wonderful, witty little metal tubes that zooms underground. It's amazing. There were so many people. I couldn't find my seat anywhere. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm here at the premiere of the latest show of one of Britain's funniest men, the little rubber-faced womanizer Steve Coggan. Oh, my God, look over there. That's Goldie. Apparently he was named after that dog from Blue Peter. There's Frank Skinner and that bloke from the lightning seeds. Well, I expect they left David Badial in the pub. Oh, and there's that woman inside Mrs. Merton. She's always drunk. Oh my God, there's a bloody guy from the Verb. And look, it's Trevor McDonald. Oh, how sweet. He shaved off his moustache, especially for the occasion. Well, I've got all my jokes ready for the post-show bash. It'll be a real hoot. Um, OK, uh, what do you call a donkey with three legs? A wonky! <laughs> Tony Blair, you probably think you know what he looks like, but do you? Here he is on page eight of today's Sun, the brilliant Griffin there comparing Tony to hard man Vinnie Jones and coming up with a remarkable likeness of Alan Sugar. And here's Blair on page seven of the same paper, David Smith's ingenious portrayal of our leader as Star Trek's Mr. Spock. So if our cartoonists are rubbish, where do we look for the fresh talent? Well, strangely, the answer lies on the letters page of today's Sun. Well, we have a charming cartoon by none other than former gangland overlord Reggie Cray. <laughs> and there's a great letter from his wife, Roberta, defending Cray's artistic talents after art critic Brian Sewell called the piece the work of a mental defective. <laughs> We on the 11 o'clock show thought the idea of commissioning dangerous psychopaths to draw cartoons was such a good one that we've got hold of some other crazed inmates' work. Here's road rage killer Tracy Andrews' effort, a wry look at transport policy. What do you think of transport? It's all right. Sorry, I appear to have cut your head off and blamed somebody else. <laughs> and here's the Yorkshire Ripper giving us his take on the Northern Ireland peace negotiations. <laughs> Sorry, it's upside down. <laughs> It's a little bit hard to make out. I think he's used his own blood. Now, and Peter has also suggested a logo for his comical strip, and here it is. <laughs> Coming up in part two, the official Channel 4 Voice of Youth. See you in a minute. Yeah. Come back in the second half and check us out because we're going to be talking to Lord St. John Stevens about government and tin. Keep it real, aye. That's it. The streets are rough. Read all about it. Woman forces baby to walk against its will. <laughs> Very slowly. <laughs> Welcome back to the 11 o'clock sh show. Grabbing today's news by the neck and spaffing on its banks. <laughs> <laughs> it's the 11 o'clock shoe show. In his speech at Blackpool yesterday, Tony Blair reaffirmed his commitment to constitutional reform. But just what is this constitutional reform? And could any subject be duller? We sent the official Channel 4 Voice of Youth, Ali G, to interview former Tory Minister Lord St John of Fosley in the hope that he could explain just how our government works to the youth of Britain. Yeah, you don't stop. It goes out to the cool up top. That's it. Wicked. Now, check this. Now, <laughs> politics is something that everyone needs to know about. It may sound boring. It may sound whatever dull when you watch it on the news. But it's something you've got to know about because it's about the country. Now, I'm here with St. John of Falsley, and he's going to tell us about it. Politics is important, isn't it? Yes, it's trifling important because it enables... Uh, ordinary people to have their say. If we're using an, an analogy from the street, 
if this is a club, mm. the political system, the Lord, the Commons, whatever, who is the DJ? Who is rocking out the rhythm? <laughs> who is laying down the rhythm? Well, I suppose in the House of Commons it's the Speaker who has to control the debate, who calls the people uh, to speak. It's a woman at the moment, Betty Boothroyd. So let's keep with that. Who is the rapper who's going on the rhythm that Boothroyd is laying down, and yet he's doing the lyrics? He's putting out the lyrics that make sense off the beat well, that the DJ is doing. Well, the, 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 the lyrics uh, are made by the members and the front bench of the two parties, the leaders of the two parties, they, I suppose, would be equivalent to the DJs. So they, they are like Biggie Smalls. Yes. They are like <laughs> Dougie Smalls, whatever. Who is there? You've got the music, you've got the rapping. Who's there checking out the new fly moves, doing a new crazy legs, doing something <laughs> fly, something interesting? Different to the music, but making sense of it. Well, anybody can do that who's so minded, but the people who have the biggest role are the people called front benchers who sit actually on the front bench yeah. in the House of Commons. They have particular ministries, yeah. and that's their responsibility, and they take the lead. And who is like Dougie Fresh and the Get Fresh crew? Who is there doing the <laughs> human version of the beatbox? Doing the... <laughs> <laughs> doing the... <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that. That backs up the Those are the ordinary members. Away. It's much more democratic, you see, than, yeah. the, than, than the rap scene. <laughs> okay. who, the club? who is the club owner who say, all right, that's enough, too much music, turn it down? The people. <laughs> what about, like, politicians, like, the idea of representing? Like, rappers represent, politicians represent. I represent my men in Slough, yeah. my men in you know, my posse in Staines, in Ivor Heath, you know, the, the Staines Massive, whatever. The MP, he represents Berkshire. Is there a difference? Are we going to start seeing the rappers, the house of MPs, becoming the house of MCs? Well, I think that all the time the composition is changing, but what you've got in the House of Commons is you've got too many lawyers and too many teachers. And not enough... Rappers, not enough rappers, and DJs, and DJs. My main man, St. John, wicked, taking it out in the main house of Lord now. It's the 30th of September, 1998, but what was happening on the 30th of September, 1988, or 78, 68, or 58? Tommy Vance will never forget. Hi, my name is Tommy Vance and this is my News Gold. Gold! The year is 1988, Anno Domini. And back in the USSR, there's a new kid on the Soviet bloc. Mikhail Gorbachev is about to become president and the Ruskies are ecstatic. He's got the new Russia all mapped out on his head. <laughs> From a red man to a dead man. Twenty years ago today, the Vatican loses its head honcho. Not God, he's an eternal spirit and therefore cannot die. <laughs> no, I'm talking about Pope John Paul I. Some say his holiness was killed by the mafia. Was he? God knows. <laughs> From holy man to Tony Benn, and the day remains the same. It's the Blackpool Conference 1978 and the burning issue is smoking. Are fags allowed at the conference? He is. But the delegates band back. And quite right, too. Smoking's wrong. I only do it because I'm cool. And my lungs are made of platinum steel. <laughs> the year of our Lord is now 1958. And the king of rock and roll leaves Memphis. Where is he going? Overseas? Why? The footage doesn't explain. My job is to watch, not to interpret. That would be editorializing. That's <laughs> not my gig. <laughs> Thanks, Tommy. The Daily Express has its own nugget of news gold today with this late-breaking story under the headline, Great Cover-Up on JFK Shooting. <laughs> Just in, Christ Crucified. <laughs> The Express tells its astounded readers that they suspect there was something fishy about the death of President Kennedy. 
My God, someone should make a film about this. <laughs> this may come as a surprise to you, but the papers don't always tell you the truth. But you can trust us to give it you straight. Here's what the papers ought to say. <clears throat> We're looking at an article in today's Express about Jerry Halliwell. The paper says, since leaving the band, she has auctioned her clothes for charity and has adopted a simple, sleek-looking meaning. Since leaving the band, she stopped dressing like a tart and is trying to become the new Princess Diana. <laughs> Jerry has ditched her raunchy image for a demure look, which fits in with her charity work. <laughs> Jerry has ditched her raunchy image for a Louise Woodward look, which makes it rather scary when she's seen clasping a child. <laughs> She's particularly interested in breast cancer, having discovered a benign lump in her right breast at the age of 18. <laughs> One disease is as good as another, and this one's perfect because she can remind people of what great tits she's got. <laughs> now, we've all been poking fun at the news and the people in the news, and that's fine. But every once in a while on this programme, we like just to take a step back and tackle something a little bit more serious. For example, the sad story of 12-year-old Simon Saunders, who suffers from an unusual condition. He only sees the world in black and white. For Simon's parents, his life has been a difficult journey. It's just the simple things in life that we all take for granted. Um, the flowers, the green grass, sunshine, blue sky, just basically things like that that, you know, are just going to be totally different to him. They are totally different to him. Simon really is quite a remarkable case. But before we can even think about treating him, we have to understand exactly how the world appears to him in monochrome. Now, by using the very latest gamma cortex fiber optic technique, we've developed a special implant which allows us to see exactly what Simon sees. And the pictures we received thus far really have been quite remarkable. The latest Euro law and working hours comes into effect at midnight tonight. Will it never end? Where will they be sticking their Euro noses next? Well, the 11 o'clock show has the matter in hand. To keep track of all the latest Euro legislation as and when it happens, we've engaged our very own, very own Euro correspondent, Vim Vanderland. So let's go right over to Brussels to find out what's happening. Vim? Today, here in Brussels, the European Commission announced a new EU directive on the standardisation of celebrities across the community of Europe. From the 1st of October, only the following people will be recognized as celebrities. Prince Rainier, Morten Hackett, <laughs> Stefan Edberg, Falco, Bjorn from Eber, Jan Hammer, and Dutch darts champion Raymond Barneveld. <laughs> from Britain, you will be allowed to have your hat-leaving singer, Paul Young. Is, is that true, Vim? No, I've been talking whoppers out of my ass. <laughs> So, so, why are you saying this? Because we are Europeans and we hate you British. <laughs> Vim Vanderland there, live from Brussels. And what a lovely sunny evening they're having there. <laughs> We've been the 11 o'clock show. That was Wednesday, September the 30th. And we'll be back tomorrow with Thursday, October the 1st. Hmm, like that. that's topical. Yeah. <laughs> Hope you'll join us then. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.